Hoffman, January 18th, 2023. Bring on the Bears. There's about 11 minutes left inside of the trading session. S&P futures are down some 62 handles, bringing them down about a uh, percent and a half. NASDAQ actually outperforming right now. Let's, uh, let's get right down to business here on this evening's video with some uh, heavy sell side activity coming back. This is the first real volatility we've seen, of course, in the last few weeks of trade. And really the first time we've actually seen volatility kind of rear its ugly head here in 2023. And uh, hey, look, as I said a moment ago, those bears, they are very much back in play today. One of the first things that I want to break down for you here is, well, precisely where we're trading. Of course, if you're looking at the S&P futures on an intraday basis, listen, we're only a hop, skip, and a jump north of the very, very important 39.31. Mark it on your screen, because if you don't have it on there, that is what we term a gravity point. I discussed it, of course, in the weekend update. We had kind of a holiday weekend, but in the weekend update, we talked about the highest probability of trade, okay? right now being driven back into the 39.31. And uh, I gotta tell you, it's not over here today. With even 10 minutes left, we may actually see that uh, that level actually print. Nevertheless, so it was saying, you know, the bears are making a bit of a comeback in, uh, in today's trading session, but I wanna break down a lot more for you than just a, a particular level of this 39.31. One of the most important aspects of trade right here, right now, okay? Of course, everybody's talking about earnings. They're talking about the fact that Microsoft is having layoffs, that Amazon is having more layoffs, and you're missing the bigger picture because right now, tech is no longer in charge. Take a look at uh, my symbol here, what we term the monsters of tech. Now, for those of you that are uh, kind of unaware or a little bit newer here to Theo Trade, I actually have a kind of a composite symbol, which is uh, Meta and Apple and Microsoft and Google and Amazon. Oh my, it's like its own little index. And uh, that index though right now is only down about 0.8%. So what is actually leading us to the downside? Well, unequivocally, it's exactly what we pointed out in the weekend update and we've been talking about for the last two weeks. People, if we're to have more sell side activity, you got to look towards the financials. And this is going to not only be relevant today, but it's going to be relevant in the next couple of trading sessions. If we're to go lower, the financials have to lead us lower. And I've been saying it day in and day out. If we are to go lower, it is the financials, okay, invariably, that will lead us lower. And that is precisely the trade activity that we are actually seeing today. Take a look at the financials here. They actually broke just early this morning, have been uh, continued on the sell side, but uh, from percentage gainers, percentage losers, obviously you can see the financials are down about 1.8%, but there's also been this just magnificent move inside of the bond market. Speaking of magnificent move, there's no roll going on in the bonds right now, but this thing is clear up to, look, the bonds did almost a half a million contracts. See something even crazier. Take a look at the notes, okay? And again, there's no roll going on. Like you'll see some big boy volume back here right before this dashed line. Let me actually make a quick note. That dashed line indicates a roll. So when you're seeing like 3 million contracts, that's in the midst of a roll. Ain't no roll going on right now and tell you what, it is staggeringly large size coming through the, uh, the 10 year. So interest rates, okay? What are they doing today? And it's really critical to take a look at this. So as the bonds go up, let's take a quick glance over at the TNX. TNX, interest rates, what is it doing? Okay, falling, okay? So they're falling. And with that falling rate, what do you ultimately have? Okay, well, what you're seeing transpire is, uh, well, really the legs being kicked out from underneath the financials. What's also critically important about the financials right now is for the most part, they're all through earnings. Tech has yet to do anything in terms of earnings, which kind of surprised me that Microsoft and so forth and Amazon are like laying off more now because they're only a hop, skip and a jump away from their earnings announcement. It actually is possibly a little bit of a tell before some of the uh, earnings announcements. Those earnings may not be spectacular when they're laying people off just a week or two before the earnings announcement. Typically you'd want to do something like that and get it all that news out in one lump sum. Uh, it's anything but again, the focus, okay, your eye needs to no longer be on technology. It got slaughtered in 2023. 
We're going to be looking heavily, at least the beginning of the year, in terms of financials. There's a few other major sectors, major sectors taking some big hits. Obviously, you'd want to look over at the energy sector. All right, some sell side activity. But if you've missed it, take a look at like XLP. XLP happens to be none other than consumer staples. There were retail sales numbers today. They were not good. They're killing consumer staples. In fact, not only did I open a trade today on the XLP, ironically, I closed the trade. It was not intended to be an intraday trade. This is actually an in-out spread. So uh, both uh, opening and closing transactions in here. And yeah, I got a little, uh, little, little trade happy today, but I've got trades today on XHB, XLP, okay, uh, S&Ps, a uh, little ZB in here. But uh, again, we both opened and closed that uh, XLP trade today profitably. So taking, taking a, a very, very large hit, interestingly and ironically. So interest rates are actually coming down, but the XHB is also taking a fairly considerable hit. XHB happens to be none other than the home builders. All right, let's push all of that side for just a second. As I stated, okay, the sector to watch, the product to watch is going to be the financials in the days to come. Now, I don't have any, you know, uh, levels per se in the financials, at least nothing that's anywhere near relevant, okay, to present price action. Nevertheless, that's when you revert to what we term auto expected moves. And the auto expected move already says, okay, a tremendous, okay, move is underway. And what you're actually looking at here inside of the financials is a significant, again, significant breach of the expected move. And the expected move is how the marketplace is handicapping risk moving forward. Nevertheless, the uh, XLF already outside the lower edge of the expected move and well on its way to either a two or three sigma move. Again, watch this one throughout the course of the, uh, the remainder of the week. The other aspect really worth noting here today happens to deal with the uh, SPX. So we're gonna look at SPX and of course, we're also gonna look at volatility here. If we take a look specifically at uh, SPX, the mother of all products, you are looking for just shy of a $65 move this week. If you guys remember that, uh, again, each and every week we talk about the expected move, you're looking for the $65 move. Now that's $65 move higher or lower. Where are we right now? We're basically on it. And one of the things that I think is incredibly important to mention is uh, where we actually are in reference to the lower edge of the expected move. So this pertains exclusively to SPX. And I want to drive that home to you. It's not the S&P futures. The S&P futures will actually trade at a different level than the SPX. It just has to do with the fact that one is open almost 24-5. It's 24 hours a day, five days a week. The SPX actually, well, closes with the marketplace, which will close here in three minutes. Nevertheless, we are right now, okay, a hair below the lower edge of the expected move. The lower edge of the expected move, once again, right around 39.34. And at this particular level, this is where gamma risk can literally kick in, like right here, right now. There's three minutes left to play in the period, okay? Gamma risk can kick in and actually shove markets lower. And as I said, we're only a hop, skip, and a jump north of the 39.31. Are we going to make it today? Maybe, maybe not. But I'll tell you one thing. In the overnight trade, do not be surprised to wake up to a marketplace that's sitting on the 3931, it's kind of the happy place where risk goes to die. That's something I'll talk about a significant amount more while live on uh, Theo Trade tomorrow morning. But uh, again, critically important level is directly ahead of us. Now, all of this being said, what does the future actually hold in here? Well, one of the things that I look at extensively, of course, is volatility and volatility structure. Is VIX moving? No, not really. So the VIX actually is having a 5% move to the upside. No surprise over there. Here, the volatility future is moving. All right, the volatility futures are a little bit big, but there is kind of a disconcerting area of trade. And a disconcerting area of trade would be the VIX. That's the volatility, the volatility index. It's actually been on the bid almost since the beginning of the year. So there's absolutely some hedging activity, okay, that's kind of bleeding through into this marketplace. The other aspect that really kind of resonates with me, it's not just like, I wouldn't look at just VVIX and say, oh, you know, that's interesting. If you take a look at SKU though, a SKU is only calculated to the end of the day. SKU is actually taken back off to the upside. And I'll actually pull up uh, the, full, the full Monty here on SKU, but SKU's actually got a fairly significant bid back. That coupled with the fact that 
even moves inside of the dollar today. There's been a complete and utter reversal inside of the dollar, okay? This looks like a little bit more of what I would term duck and cover, okay? We're buying dollar. We're actually buying VIX as a hedge. Skew, skew is actually taking off to the upside, which is indicative of out of the money puts being purchased, okay? To reduce downside risk. We're coming close to what is a critical gravity point of 39.31. People, stars are kind of aligning here. Look, okay, bring on the bears. Here we are in 2023. And once again, we are discussing volatility. I would look for a lot more of this price action, some wild moves throughout the remainder of the week. So uh, again, let's get down to the 39.31. We'll look for the possibility of even breaking below it and uh, the volatility box returning. With that, again, hands and feet inside of the vehicle because here comes uh, once again that sell side activity. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.